Once again, a warm welcome to everyone for this MLS Corporate Webinar. It's our pleasure to have you on this webinar. We are now in the month of March, and uh, this month, or this particular webinar, is an is an interesting one as we have an exciting uh, guest, uh, a guest who's returning back after uh, close to four months, Dr. Mark Matters. Um, so welcome. Dr. Mark Matters, and welcome everyone on this call. Um, today's, like like I mentioned, this March webinar is going to be interesting because uh, we have the special guest, and he has a lot to share with us, the applications and uh, great knowledge that we can apply um, in our life for, for better wellness. So without um, uh, any delay, I'd like to call upon Dr. Mark. Um, I'd like to share a little bit about him, his experience, and so on. Dr. Mark Matters is a chiropractor. He's trained in UK, where he ran a large practice for 23 years before returning to Canada with his family. He specializes in applied kinesiology and attempts to determine and treat root cause of all conditions presented in his clinic. He developed the zero-point alignment technique which is a method of diagnosis and treatment using zero-point instruments. Using his method, both practitioner and non-practitioner can correct and maintain normal spinal and muscle function, as well as acupuncture meridian balance with a very few easy steps. He teaches his patients how to use the instruments to maintain normal functions. He is presently completing the zero-point alignment technique manual, which will be available soon. Please note that this technique is not a substitute for licensed professional diagnosis and treatment. For further information, you can, you can look up at his website, that is www.chirosolutions.ca. So that's all about uh, Dr. Mark. And uh, Dr. Mark, are you there on the call? Yes, now you can hear me. Great. Yes, we can hear you loud and clear. Welcome and uh, good evening, Dr. Mark. And uh, um, so um, share, let, let us know a little bit about your practice and what you're doing while I just change the slide and get ready with your slides. Sure. I've been a chiropractor for over 30 years and besides using the joint dysfunction, I use a method called applied kinesiology. Uh, cause of the problem. And applied kinesiology is um, a chiropractic technique that involves using muscle testing to uh, determine mechanical problems. And using the neurological feedback a uh, very simple muscle test, you can find root cause. For example, if a patient has chronic lower back pain, it could be the, the chronic back pain due to the fact that they've got tired adrenal glands that they've rest for many, many years, and the adrenals of the glands above the kidneys are incredibly tired. And uh, there are reflex points in the body to tell us whether or not those glands are tired. Interestingly, uh, those glands have certain muscles associated with them, and those muscles are the ones that support the pelvis and its function, and also the. And so, if a patient has long term um, adrenal problems, they have long term back problems. And so, so, we try to get to the root of it uh, using testing procedures. A common uh, issue is uh, chronic neck pain and uh, headaches. They keep hanging on and they have a bit of treatment, but they come back again. And often it's due to uh, a problem with the jaw or a temporal mandibular joint dysfunction. And they don't know, but they're cracking and grinding teeth at night. 
And because they're clenching and grinding their teeth, uh, it sets up muscle spasm in the neck and uh, also in the skull, and that gives them headaches. But you know, a lot of people clench and grind their teeth because the bones in their skull and neck are already locked, and so they they subconsciously clench in order to flex the muscles in and around the neck and skull, hopefully loosen it up. So that's one of the reasons people go to tea. So reasons, and I tell you that the wands and the discs have helped me to uh, very accurately find the, the hidden problem, which is why I use them extensively on every single patient as a, not only a form of uh, to assist in diagnosing but also in treatment. Uh, did you want me to keep going? I noticed you don't have the slides up yet. Yes, uh, I'm just trying to turn on the slide because um, your format is different. Okay. You can go ahead and address the crowd. They are there eagerly waiting to hear you. While sure. I'm on the technical problem, yes. No problem. Uh, and interesting, I was introduced to your point by a patient. Um, someone lent him one, and he lent it to me for a weekend about five years ago. And using techniques, uh, I decided to see what they did. For a restricted joint muscle test, testing techniques, um, uh, you know it's there, or you can palpate, you can know it's there. But I found when I stimulated the joint with the instance, uh, the testing was gone as the joint released. And so it made me realize that perhaps something happening to me use, uh, when we use the instruments. So I had no idea how they work. I think I do now that quantum physics for to understand it. But, you know, the thing about the testing procedures and applied kinesiology, you know, I've been doing this for years. And when you do the same testing procedures over and over and over thousands of patients, you have pretty much confident, you're pretty much confident that the muscle testing procedures work because they just do, they're repeatable. And um, one of the things we know for certain is that after we've made a correction to a joint of the spine or the skull, etc., the muscles that we test a week prior to the correction are small. So we can use muscle testing in and around, let's say, the pelvic joint to determine what we've reset the brain to that joint. And um, I'll give you an example. Um, and muscles uh, has this example on it, and when a room puts it up, uh, it's the second slide. Uh, one thing is uh, to lower back pain, and there's a restriction of not only the face, but the pelvic joints, usually on the side, and that's called the central. And you can determine uh, whether this is restricted by 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 extending it by patient lie face down and going up and down on the joint. Um, and very often, where there's a reduced function, that that joint is locked, and there's action uh, of the muscles on that side, and the shortens on that side. So I'm telling you these things because you can go to slide two of them. These things because I, I want you to know that there's a before and after testing in basic treatment, but there's also a before and testing reducible using the instruments, the wand. And as I said, in the sacroiliac pain, you can see the picture in the left where there's swelling uh, in and around the joint and and the pain radiates down part way down the leg at times, uh, and you can see the, the lady in the middle. Uh, the muscles have tense the right side and pulls the leg short. And very often, when we mention life, we take short the leg, and uh, where the heel is shorter on the right than it is on the left in that case. And you can see the can happens in the, in the picture on the on the far right. 
And, uh, you know, when, when we made the correct practical uh, manipulation, it unlocks the joint and the brain can reset all the muscles to the joint and the correction is made. And if the correction stays, that is, the brain to joint correction is stayed, of course, it gets better. All these things, and because the exact same thing happens when you use instruments correctly. So the instruments are very, very powerful. Uh, we do all confirm that this lady in the middle is a problem is we'll, we'll do a test on her and, and can I have the next slide and if the joint is locked you will see gluteus maximus on the side locked is is weak when at the top end corner you'll be abdominal on the bottom and we'll find often and the sartoric on the same tie, side of the picture is very, and very, very common finding every patient who has a long sacroiliac joint. And, and I'm saying these things because this is before test, and after they're treated, we test again the strong. I, and that's just from using the instrument. And so, I love the smile on patients' face when I do a few twirls with the instrument and go back and retest the patient completely strong. And uh, so what basically happening is that the brain is reconnecting to the joint, and uh, the joint is full of nerve and they're constantly speaking to the brain. But when the joint stops moving, that sacroiliac joint, you see that redness in that joint on the picture on there. When that joint stops moving, the signaling to the brain stops, and therefore the signaling back to the muscle that joint in place and make it function stops. Hence, all those muscles become weak. Now, <clears throat> next slide, Arun. The next objective in uh, a number of now, uh, lady here uh, has a restriction on the restriction of her skull seat. Now, if I find through diagnosis that I just simply have her hold an instrument over the bridle or the top of the head while she holds another instrument against that joint. It takes 10 20 seconds and the joint becomes completely free again. Now, I think that uh, there's muscle involvements, and there's a few slide how we can test for muscle involvements. Simply have her the instrument completely to her right, the nose, one instrument is higher. Well, you trace over the muscles that are weak with the other instrument. You can see she's using it on her scaling muscles in the front of her neck. And if I determine that she has a cross-restricted sacroiliac joint, the picture on the right, she just simply holds the instrument on top of her head and holds the other instrument on the sacroiliac joint. Now, if she has a muscle in the sacroiliac region that is, she would then instrument between her nose, between her eyes, just on the bridge of her nose in order to treat that muscle. You know. And all this does is, is somehow reset the brain to the area that was locked. So on the picture on the left, we can see that the instrument is at C23. The instrument is uh, kind of a motor and sensory area of her motor cortex. And somehow the, there's a connection between the instrument on the head over the brain and the instrument on the neck that brings the area together. This is the only way I can explain it. I can explain it maybe with a little bit of physics and cellular microtubules, which we can go into time and light and energy through each cell into the next cell through the nerve. I, the whole network, I don't know. There are lots of possible explanations. The simplification is 
If you have a joint, a joint that's not connecting properly, hold one instrument on the joint, put the other on the top of the head. If your muscle is not working properly, stick one instrument between your eyes, right in the bridge of your nose, between the eye, and another instrument on the muscle that you don't think is functioning properly. Okay, next slide, please, Sharon. World of, of energy, and you know, itself a gigantic uh, magnetic field. Now, it's a weak magnetic field, but it still is a magnetic field. And you can see when you hang this together, you get a magnetic field uh, demonstrated here. And uh, I'm going to show you a little later that we can use mag mag a magnet to do a diagnosis of how the wands or the instruments work. I just wanted to give you that. Uh, see, next slide, please. The slide is a, a picture of the sun and its influence on the earth. Um, everything that happens to us is influenced by electrons and, and protons and forms of energy. Because technically, we are a bunch of uh, uh, atoms that are joined together. Next slide, please. We generate an electrical field. All our bodies have electric, electrical field. Now, I'm sure you've seen this picture before that Rune had in his last lecture, but we're made up of gazillions of atoms. And as you see in this picture with this woman, the atoms, um, when they join together, form molecules, and um, molecules join together to form components of our cells. And, um, and then our cells join together to form tissues, and our tissues join together to form organs and organs, and there, therefore you have the, the human body. But if you go right back around the circle again, you'll see that every tissue of the human body is made up of atoms with, yeah, with a nucleus, uh, with electrons and protons and neutrons circulating around. So we're just a mass of energy. And the more densely uh, packed uh, the the atoms are, of course, uh, the more atoms are part of the, the substance. But nevertheless, everything is made up of atoms. Next slide, please. And so everything is generating an electrical field. Uh, everything that's a that every part of our body is generating a field. Um, and and this is an example of. The middle picture of the, of the electric that emanates from the heart. And it's it, because it's a powerful electrical organ, made, uh, a, a frequency uh, up to three meters. Uh, uh, a, a famous uh, Russian physicist developed a, um, a method of, of measuring the field called gas distribution. Visualization, and I, I use chart visualization in my practice to measure the aura, the, the biofield of the body. Some people call it aura, and when we measure each figure, it's a rep, uh, segment of the figure. Finger represents a part of you of the body, and you can see in the bottom picture um, this gentleman a really good in uniform field, but others have holes in their field. And uh, the electrical um, energy in the area isn't good. In the far right picture, you see the ac uh, the acupuncture meridians of the body. Those are those are um, lines of electricity or, or, or chi moving through the body. Those things are, are influenced dramatically uh, by uh, the by the instruments as well. Uh, next picture, please. Um, now, this electrical field generator uh, is um, dramatically affected, uh, you know, power lines, motors, by the computer you're standing in front of, the cell phones. We, we really don't know just how fast these things are uh, and their effect on, on our bodies. I have a little meter that measures what my cell does. Uh, I'm talking and it goes into the danger zone every time I uh, fetch my email and the danger zone is the potential of harming my uh, electrical and obviously the 
uh, cells because the cells are supposed to be, be generating electricity to function normally and if they're distorted by another force. Next picture please. Now the next picture uh, shows uh, another view of gas visualization and I put this up here because uh, using the instrument In the electrical field of what when I met uh, uh, that um, like the thyroid mass without tarot is as and the short and the neck area isn't working properly, they will be on the field. A correct field, then you have corrected function of those different organs. Uh, so that's why it's important. Next picture, please. Correcting the field is exceed, exceedingly important because this is a surface of every cell in your body and you see these little green trees growing off the surface of every cell. Uh, the electric field of the body is manifest through these uh, they're like the antenna single cell. And the electrical activity they have and how they function is incredibly important to our health. Next picture please. There's some insight on aging of cells and um, how the feel of the cells uh, are important, is important. So a healthy cell maintains a, a metal resting voltage of about 90 millimeters, depending on the type of cell, and, uh, with the outer membrane of the cell being more positive than the inner membrane. So, so when a cell is poison injured or nutrient deprived or when it's being affected by a cell or any other electrical, uh, the cell voltage falls to as low as about 40 millivolts and therefore uh, at the potential pumps uh, mal and uh, cell energy just uh, stops and so uh, it's important that we maintain a good, healthy electrical environment for our cells. And you can see on the bottom, um, uh, as we get older, our, our cells de deplete in the amount of voltage at the age of uh, 48, about 80 percent of the normal mole voltage at 72, uh, 70 percent, uh, 96, 60 percent. But there's no excuse for getting old. Getting old doesn't mean that you have to have tired cells. All you have to do is rejuvenate them. Uh, having the right type uh, of food and everything makes an engine and uh, cellular happiness uh, through good field is the, is the way to do it. Next one, please. Okay, well, I, I highly recommend that you uh, read the book by, by Larry called The Field. And it will help you to understand a few of the things that I'm going to go into uh, because you, need, you should understand uh, the electromagnetic nature of our body and how we are connected to the zero point field and how these instruments help us to, to connect better to the field to balance ourselves. Uh, a lot of work done by a guy named uh, Becker uh, on research into how the field affects the body and if you go into the room, there's a picture of um, a salamander, many of you may have seen before, nevertheless really interesting. They know that the salamander emits and uh, the, uh, they know the potential uh, of the field. Uh, uh, it's, it's, it's the next one on. Uh, let me talk about this one first. This is Dr. Rupert Sheldrake, and he talks about morphogenetics. Uh, now, if you just or you and listen to what he has to say, 
because he um, he's done some research into how pets seem to know where their when their masters are coming home. Uh, he talks about um, if um, of the, of leaves his the, her pack behind the cubs behind uh, and wander off. And wolves are still content, and she's content knowing they're safe because somehow they're connected. The the pet owner uh, is somehow connected to the pet, and done studies to show that the um, owner leaves the house and goes like six miles away for four hours. The lies there, and at the time the the owner says, I'm going to go home. Uh, the dog up and sits at the bar and waits for them. They've done this on two separate. They found this is exactly this, and something like 45% of dogs do this. And this uh, researcher believes it's something to do with the morphogenetic field that is generated between two people. And he believes that if, like, the not in people, but people and pets, that, that there's some kind of quantum link between them. And, and this, this may be so because the research is, is, is quite in-depth on the subject, and to be true, it's beginning to understand it through quantum physics. But I'm going to talk a little bit about the entanglement theory and how this instrument can actually uh, be involved in this more field and how you can test the instruments and whether there's a between them. I'm going to show you that later. But let's go on the field that's around uh, the salamander, which is the next studies we're in. The salamander, um, they know by measuring electric, has this tremendous field uh, uh, surrounding it. And if you off the salamander's limb, um, the stem cells start to, uh, to form at the amputation level and uh, differentiate into uh, nerve cells and bone cells, tissue cells, and, and claws, etc. So on the right picture, the, the amputation took place, and within uh, 40 days, an entire completely regenerated uh, leg uh, or back. And so they believe only been done by the field generated that the DNA uh, is simply the code. It's the field of the body that's going on. Uh, please. Next slide. Instruments work, and then I'm going to show you how to do basic muscle testing, and then I'm going to show you um, uh, a few things on do do some treatment. Okay, you have the next slide, Rick. Next slide, I believe is a picture for and. Uh, Some silly things. I'm going to show you some silly things regarding uh, the function of uh, these instruments in the minute. Next slide, please. Right, well, the instruments seem to join to the zero point field. Now, the zero point field, well, we can't see 
get to it easily. But it used to be what Einstein says, which holds everything is more in place. And I've got a picture on the left side, and this one has all this field. That's what those um, ellipses show. Well, those holes have to be filled in, otherwise that area near the hole, uh, his cells, his, let's say in the left side of his neck isn't going to function properly, etc. And by using instruments, you can somehow weaken that person to the zero point field. And what the zero point field seems to do is make that which is not functioning, function normally again. Let me say that if that which is not functioning correctly, electrically around the body or in the field, it fills that hole in and makes a correction. Next slide, please. Right. Um, you've seen muscle testing before, probably. Um, this is a little cartoon of a basic test on uh, deltoid muscle. Next slide. Now, these, uh, when you do a test, you make sure you put your arm and left person over, don't push down, but put your, let's say, your right hand forearm there and press down. There's a bit of travel in this uh, that was down by There should be no travel words. The only time there's an indifference is when there is a weakness of that. And uh, if every time they try to urge an attack, you're allowed to lock them in place and let them allow the person to stop you and resist. And in practice, you overnight. Next picture, please. Okay, there's a ways of muscle testing as you can hear. Um, you can do it lying down, uh, um, but that's the muscle that we test. I, the next pictures that I have are of people who are uh, who are stood up and laying down. So there's lots of ways of doing it. Um, but I highly recommend that you practice doing this. Remember, you're looking for a locking of the muscle in place. You're not trying to overpower the person. As a matter of fact, the person shouldn't even get tired of testing over and over again. You should, you're just going for a lock. You're not trying to overpower. And when they can lock, you know you found a fault. So uh, next slide, please. Now, this is a picture of the um, uh, some acupuncture points that you might want to test just to see whether uh, you can muscle accurately. If you were to place, um, see the yellow, if you were to two discs, uh, two MIS fusion discs to that part, just under the eyeballs, and then do a muscle test, if that person is normal, they will go completely weak. And the same is true at the collarbones on kidney 27, both sides. If you put two discs there, uh, just hold them there in place, or you can stick them there and do a muscle test, they will go weak. They won't go weak, however, uh, if they have a fault in the kidney meridian. Um, that's another lesson altogether. Now, if you were to do the same thing on, on that spleen meridian with a black mark, if you can put two discs there and do a muscle test, and if the spleen the person will go weak. So anytime you cover up two acupuncture meridians, um, one on the left and the right, as long as they're the same meridian, got to be both kidney and kidney on, or, or, or spleen and spleen on the left. As you cover those with it, the patient will go weak. Now, uh, those are things that you can practice. And, and, you know, I wish I were doing a live seminar and I could show you all of these things, but that's not possible. Next, we're almost getting to the end. Um, I'm going to show you um, some basic testing procedures for finding lower back problems. 
Okay, well, this patient has her arm up ready for me to test. I'm not in the picture, I'm taking the picture, so I can't test, but I put the arrows in. Now she's holding a, an instrument or a wand in her right hand. She has her instrument on the left, on her right side, uh, it's under her buttock, or under her sacroiliac joint. <clears throat> I usually push it in further, but I, you wouldn't be able to see by pushing it. In. I just simply test that muscle. If that patient goes weak, then 100% she will have a locked right sacroiliac joint. If strong, she doesn't have a locked sacroiliac joint. I would then move to the left sacroiliac joint, test her again. If she goes weak, she got a left sacroiliac joint, etc., etc. Now, if I thought she had a weak muscle associated with the sacroiliac joint, I take a disc or a pendant and put it on her forehead, and you can see the uh, the, the wand is under her sacroiliac joint on the piriformis muscle. Uh, if I thought she had a piriformis muscle weakness, or you can just test to find out, she would go weak only if she has the pendant on her forehead. So the pendant on the forehead, or a disc of forehead, the wand held to the forehead, in this position will actually diagnose whether that muscle in her buttock is weak. If I thought she had an abdominal uh, weakness, I would just simply pick the one in her right buttock and put it onto her abdominal muscle and I would test it and it would go weak. A disc between the eyes, one in the hand, and another disc pointing, another or one pointing to a muscle will actually cause the patient to be weak if the muscle is completely weak. I know that's a lot of information you gather in one, one setting, and it's much easier if I could show you in person. But uh, going back and to the next picture, um, if she had any of those things wrong with her, uh, the next picture shows you the treatment protocol again to treat a neck joint that's locked. You just hold it up on top of the head and hold one on the, on the neck for about 10 to 20 seconds. If it's a muscle that's locked, uh, but not functioning, and it's weak, you just simply hold it between the eyes. And on the forehead, she's treating her right sick joint. If I thought there was a weak muscle associated with sacral joint, she would just simply take the, uh, uh, the, the, the instrument that's on her lower back and point it at the and put the other instrument and hold it there for 20 seconds. Okay, I'm going to get into some of the interesting findings that I've determined uh, with regards to these instruments and how they work, and I'll do that very quickly. Next slide, please, Aaron. Now, this section, <clears throat> you're going to find a bit hard to believe, I think, because I found hard to believe when I discovered it. Every patient, I've seen many, many, many patients with this technique. And they all look at me like I've got two heads. I can't believe it works. I'm going to show it to you. Now, uh, using gas visualization, uh, we can see whether or not there is any um, uh, um, emanation of zero point uh, coming from the a pendant. So there's my pendant there on the top right hand corner, and there's an untreated pendant that before my fusion technology. In the bottom left hand corner and the bottom right hand corner, of course, you've seen these pictures before. That's a treated pendant. Okay, so the treated pendant is emitting something, all right? It's emitting energy. Now, if we go to the next slide, we're going to see. Uh, uh, Titanium discs, which you can order that drinks cup you can buy. I don't even know what they're called, but anyway, I just, you know, the drinks cup holder that you can buy to charge up. I just rip those discs out. And what I do is um, I let them sit together for a period of time. And when they sit together for, say, 24 hours, and this is. Um, Bohr and Einstein argued about in the 30s, can something that resonates with another object remain in resonance even 
Well, not to be the case. And, and I'll explain how, but in the bottom picture, I have a very strong group of magnets on top of disk A. And because disk A and B are joined together, the effect of the electrical field over disk A is exactly the same over disk B, even though the magnet's not over disk B. Now, this is a contact. And this only happens as the disks have been treated with my fusion technology. And, and secondly, I put them together. They sit four hours a day. They stay joined together all the time until I do it. So next, I'll try and explain further what's going on. Okay, next slide, good. So when two instruments resonate with one another, I come one. So um, on the bottom picture, I kind of yellow for you, and I'm just saying that there's a there's literally a beam that goes across the room from one instrument to the other. And I've done this as far away as um, uh, I think uh, 20 some feet, and it's for, I haven't tried it further than that. I treat them right in the, the office, and it still works. So we do it. So, slide please. I hope you can see this next slide. What you can't see, or you can see me on the left testing your patient. Now, this patient has a magnet over the conception vessel, uh, which the line is um, points with uh, the conception vessel. They go to that part of their body, right over the center line. They cannot this and lock the muscle. So that this lady is being tested. I've got the magnet there. Uh, I'm pushing. She cannot resist. Okay. Now, if I put the picture over, I put uh, a disc on her tummy. The magnet's not there anymore. And there's another on the shelf behind. All right. And you'll see the magnet stood over to the right in that third picture. Disc and disc. Put them and she's and then I just reach over and I put the magnet on top of the dip, and you can see her face, and that's because she went completely weak. And if I move the magnet off the disc that's on the shelf, she and if I move it back on to the disc that's on the shelf, somehow the a field of magnet goes to the conception vessel in front of her. I am um, mesmerizing. It works on absolutely every person, and it's a shock to everyone uh, that it works because they can see that it's across the room and they go completely weak. Now, next, please. Uh, these are two more demonstrations of that before finish. The one red line is the conception vessel and the magnet is on the conception vessel. And if I test this patient, she'll go completely weak in picture one. Now, um, what I've done is um, take a disc on her, right where the conception vessel is. And you can see in slide three, uh, in slide two, that is on the disc that's on the chair of the arm. And it's a negative influence. And if I test any muscle in her body, she'll go completely weak. Now, what this is, that if I put a magnet over the center line, picture three, and test her, she won't go weak. And she won't be because it's seen that the magnet that's on the other is providing the protection that the provide. Uh, I think the, the main application of this technique that if you were to take a titanium disc like this and join it to your pendant at night when it's sitting uh, on your nightstand and uh, bring that, those as a pair to work with you. Wear the pendant and put the other uh, disc on your desk. 
certain that every electromagnetic field otherwise harm you won't harm you. You're being protected by the um, on the desk. It's kind of this quantum thing going on. Uh, that's all. That's the only way I can explain it. But it works on every. If you please, this is my last one. You may have questions. I don't know. Um, you test. Um, I've got uh, ladies, she's holding her arm out, her muscle tag. You see the disc left to the right of her uh, on, the, on the little shelf in my office. Um, if I muscle test her, she'll be strong. If I put a magnet in her field with that, she will be because of the disc that's next to her on the top right hand corner. It's the one that. I will do it the other way around. Place the magnet on the shelf. The magnet will transfer his negative influence and in picture. The magnet will transfer the influence to the person that will completely leave. So what I'm saying is, it's better to have your pendant joined to a magnet somehow, uh, joined to another uh, disc or another pendant, and have one on your desk and wear the other to protect you from all fear. Anyway, that's all I have to say. Uh, any questions? Yes, if you have any questions uh, for Dr. Mark, uh, kindly just um, type it into the chat at, in the webinar or request uh, uh, to unmute you so that you can actually ask a question. Uh, okay, um, I may have uh, someone who has a question. Um, okay. Um, Rick, uh, if you're there, Rick, uh, you can ask your question. Uh, I have unmuted you. Okay. Rick, Rick, I don't think so. He's on the line. Um, Okay, I have a question here by uh, um, Kathy. Kathy from Canada. Kathy Dick is um, uh, for Dr. Mark. Is what would you do for distant healing? That's her question. What would you do for distant healing? Well, <clears throat> I I don't. <laughs> I'm afraid I can't answer that because I've never tried. I'm at the point right now where I know that that. And I don't know how great a distance two joint, two joint titanium discs will maintain, but I'm pretty, I do know that across the room uh, you can join two people together. And for instance, I have, I have had two patients where is the desk, another word, where it's going. Uh, the faults on the other patient because they're joined by the disc. I know that sounds crazy, crap, but I, I, I'm sure it's quantum physics, and I find that it works every time. It acts as a strip for the other through the discs. And I've also tested people for nutritional uh, needs using the body prep, using the disc. So I have one disc on my desk and one disc on whatever neutral need they have, or uh, I can just put it on the desk, I don't have to put it on the body, and it does the same kind of testing. Um, so I don't know about distance healing, that's something you might want to try yourself with um, into this. Sorry, I can't answer it better. Okay, um, thank you, Dr. Mark. I have another question is, uh, from um, Eva, Eva from Chicago. Uh, what she's asking is a long time ago, uh, she was told by a psychic that uh, she should have the pendant on the desk or the nightstand rather than wearing it. How does this fit in um, with what you're saying and about wearing uh, one and having one on the desk? Well, as I said, I think the, the most were a pendant is um, to have a second one um, on the desk next to you or on the bed stand 
next to you as long as it's been joined to the pendant that you're wearing. So I recommend not wearing the pendant at night. I recommend taking the pendant off at night and laying it on top of another pendant or a titanium disc. And then in the morning, put the pendant on, take that second disc with you, and leave it somewhere in your office to actually help to protect the magnetical. That's my recommendation. I could be completely wrong. Maybe you should wear it at night. But I think they entangle better if you leave them connected. It should be more effective. Uh, I've tested pendants for the correction of weak electromagnetic field influence, and they do work if you wear them all the time, but only for weak fields. If you put a strong field in, like that is generated by a magnet, it doesn't work. You actually have to have a, a, a non-conductive. I just wish I could put this on a, a stripe and I could, uh, or some kind, and I could show you how to always accurately. Um, but that's Thank you, Dr. Mark. Um, another question from um, Jane, Jane Kali, Kanila. Um, her question is, uh, Dr. Mark, have you tried any of our products on people with arthritis, osteoarthritis on the knee? Uh, well, I mean, yes, because uh, the knees are all sore because they, um, the muscles that support them are disconnected from the brain. So you should put a, a wand on the forehead, on the top of the head, and then another wand all over the knee. You have to do that knee. And then you have the same with the back on the same side. So if it's a left knee, well, your right hand on one with one on the top of it, the left hand, then circle the knee touching it, one, and then with the left hand, circle the back touching it. So you do the knee first and back because the knee works at the function correct knee in balance. And grow cards and ligament back certainly uh improvement of the just practically whether it's a tibia for instance um made just as well as if I were to do it correctly. One on the bullet there around it for a couple of a minute or two minutes on that help re reset the knee and on the back. I that will set the function to the knee. So that's that's I can see for that. Okay. Um thank you, Dr. Mark. Uh, another question, uh, this is from Lucille from uh, Dallas, Texas. Is do you present these results at any of the chiropractic conferences or or do you you know travel to do workshops and so on or do you have any intention to do such well if I, i'm i'm not, um, ready to find on how to um i i teach my patients uh through seminars here in my practice do and I teach them on one-on-one, -on -one, um, how to replace with people and how to use them. I, and I would if I were invited. I'd probably come and teach people how to learn. I, this is a, it'd take me a whole day to explain and teach you how to do all of these things. It is so worth. And the other quest, the other thing is, no, I haven't done it for uh, chiropractic conferences. Um, um, some chiropractors and other would, others would want to perhaps burn at stake. But, you know, this is strictly physics and neurology, and I have no problem showing them if they want to know. So yes, I would be willing to teach people, no question. 
Thank you, thank you, Dr. Mark. Um, uh, what you shared with us the last one hour is, is definitely very valuable for everyone. I believe that all the listeners have taken a lot of value from, uh, uh, from your sharing um, the last one hour. Um, it's nice to have you back on this uh, webinar again. And again, you have amazed us with uh, uh, your practice and how uh, the quantum technology in zero point field and AFT technology has affected and improved uh, people's life in the general wellness. So thank you very, very much, uh, Dr. Mark. Hope to see you again in uh, more webinars with more exciting uh, research and information. And someday soon, um, you know, we will have your pleasure of having you in one of our training workshops or seminars um, uh, where you can meet in person and share with us. So thank you again, Dr. Mark, for, for being with us, uh, for sharing in this webinar. Thank you very, very much. Thank you. Okay, so um, that is um, Dr. Mark we had um, sharing with us. So uh, with that, uh, we have um, come to the, um, uh, the end uh, of this webinar. We're running late on that. Just, for, just to recall and remember, uh, to remind you that our star packages, the uh, enrollment packages are still uh, available um, um, and it's still ongoing. So far has been quite popular um, in the uh, recruitments um, especially of recru uh, recruiting of new business associates. It has been accepted so far quite well as a very good duplication packages. So remember that the staff packages are still available. We have a total of five packages ranging from US $200 right up to uh, US $500. And um, uh, with, with, with what have uh, Dr. Mark has shared, uh, please take note um, that it's all about, um, you know, how we can learn uh, from one another, how we can share uh, and help one another, how can we replace the I uh, with the we, thereby we are able to replace the illness with the wellness. And um, with that, we have um, an amazing technology, we have an amazing uh, um, purpose in our life to, to, uh, to improve our wellness and also to help others improve uh, their wellness. Uh, most of all, there are a lot, there are a lot of people suffering in silence, uh, practically in, in every day of their life, uh, uh, with physical pain, emotional pain, mental pain, and and and, and so on. And we have the ability uh, to help them, to heal them, and to improve them. So uh, take note and um, enjoy the rest of the weeks ahead until we meet in the next uh, webinar. Uh, be well so that you can think well, so that you can do well, so that you can feel well, and obviously so that we can live well. So with that, thank you very much and have a wonderful evening. Thank you.